Hello, this is Walter Strinick. Just a quick sound check, confirming that you can hear me and you can see my screen. If you could just respond in the question box, a yes and a yes, or in the chat window, uh, that would be great. Thank you. We'll get started in a few minutes. Thank you, Jeff. I'm going to give it a, just a couple more minutes. Um, if anyone else is signing in or running a little bit behind, we'll give them a chance to catch up. So uh, we look to get started here in just a couple of minutes. Thank you. It looks like we just have a couple more people joining us. We'll give them a moment to get settled. Again, confirming that you can see my screen, you can hear my voice. Looks like just a couple more uh, folks that are signing in. So uh, I appreciate your patience today. This meeting, this webinar is being recorded and you should be receiving an email with a link to the recording in the, in the near future, within the next uh, few business days. And with that said, we'll, we'll commence the webinar. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you all wherever you are in the world. I appreciate the time that you're spending today to learn a little bit about uh, servos and PLCs in capping and dispensing applications. My name is Walter Stridick. I am located in the Philadelphia area here in the United States. I am the Motion Control Business Development Manager for North America for Unitronics. With me today is Thomas Gomes. Thomas is a Senior Application Engineer at Unitronics and our Motion Control Specialist here in North America. He's one of a team of about 12 application engineers around the globe um, and one of our senior motion control folks. So again, thank you for joining us. We're going to take about 40 minutes or so today to uh, review the presentation. If you have any questions as we go along, please type them into the question window. Um, in the GoToMeeting uh, software. And if we're not able to answer your questions today, um, 
again, uh, we will take note of them and um, get you answers as quickly as possible. Today's topics, container capping and precision dispensing. And I've broken this webinar into two parts. Uh, the first part will be container capping. So if you can envision uh, a, a beverage bottle, and uh, on that bottle you have a screw cap, or perhaps you can envision um, a vial of, um, of antibiotics or some type of pharmaceuticals, and you might have a, a crimp on cap onto that uh, small vial. Um, so we're going to talk about capping first. We're going to look at the application, give a brief overview, and then um, highlight some of the capping devices uh, that I thought of. Uh, if you have any that you want to add to it, just uh, go ahead and type it into the question window. Um, we're going to look at application requirements and the benefits of using Unitronics. And then in part two of the webinar, we'll do this for precision dispensing. As I mentioned, there are different types of caps. Uh, in this application, you might be working on push-on or snap-on caps, uh, like a typical beer bottle. Well, I, yeah, I guess beer bottles still have uh, the push-on caps. Uh, your typical water or, or juice uh, beverages have a screw-on cap, typically. Uh, sometimes you'll get a medicine with some type of an induction sealed uh, cap. Uh, a tamper resistant is another type of cap. Uh, and they can all be applied with a servo motion. It would take uh, different types of devices to apply the caps onto the bottles. Uh, some are manual, perhaps you brew uh, beer at home and you have a, a manual vice uh, to put the caps on your bottles. Uh, some might be semi-automated. Uh, a small retailer or small manufacturer might be loading the bottle manually and then pushing a button to have the cap put on. And then of course you have applications where um, Coca-Cola or Pepsi are uh, capping uh, millions of bottles of beverages a day, and they have fully automated lines uh, for their capping application. Um, some of these different uh, devices can be run using pneumatics. Uh, some are uh, run on hydraulic systems. Uh, I've seen capping devices that are cam driven with electric motors and of course uh, one of my favorites uh, would be a, a servo system so that's a, a basic overview of the uh, of the different types of capping devices if you think about pneumatic devices um, whether it's manual or automated what have you um, typically the speed of that uh, pneumatic device is fixed. Uh, the valve that you're using to make the pneumatic cylinder move has a certain coefficient of flow uh, and, and therefore the speed is, is typically fixed and not easily adjustable. Also the torque or force applied between the cap and the container is fixed. Uh, pneumatic devices, you can adjust the pressure, the air pressure, which would change the torque or the force, uh, but typically it's a set and forget type of application. And the cost is relatively inexpensive. One other, um, what I think disadvantage to a pneumatic device is that it has minimal flexibility. Uh, it may be more difficult to change to different capping size or capping torques, uh, and the flexibility of a pneumatic device limits you um, to what you can properly cap. A hydraulic device, um, 
you you can accomplish variable speeds, uh, torques and forces using a hydraulic device are flexible if you have the right type of valving. Uh, cost is typically the most expensive of a capping device. Again, it depends on the application, but uh, hydraulic cylinders, a hydraulic power unit, um, the the cost of operation in addition to the cost of acquisition uh, can get expensive. And then another drawback to using hydraulic devices is that uh, it could be messy. You're working with hydraulic fluids, uh, typically under high forces, and if they spring a leak or a hose gets loose, or a seal fails, um, you have quite a mess to uh, clean up and quite possibly contaminate your product, uh, which is uh, not a good thing, of course. Electric cam devices are nice. Uh, typically, the speeds are fixed. They can be expensive, the torque is fixed. So these are devices that are uh, driven by an electric motor. It's a cam operating on a shaft and it's, uh, again, not very flexible. Uh, the cost for these can be very expensive. Uh, so you'll find yourself uh, not able to change between capping sizes or styles, bottle sizes, et cetera. And then uh, last but not least, for container capping, you have servo devices. Uh, they could be manual, uh, semi-automated or automated machines. Uh, the speeds of the servo devices can be very flexible. Um, you can increase the throughput, you can increase or decrease the capping speed. The torque or force that is applied by the servo motor is also very flexible. And I would say that when dealing with Unitronics, one of the advantages is that our costs uh, for the equipment or for the servo components is reasonable. Uh, you're not talking the high cost of a hydraulic power unit, a hydraulic cylinder, and you have um, a system using servo motors and drives that can be uh, very flexible. You can cap multiple containers uh, with the Unitronics PLCs. You can uh, write the logic so you can have a recording of the data, how much torque was applied to the cap, how much or how many rotations occurred. And of course, servo devices are highly repeatable. So if you're in a pharmaceutical type application and you need to put the cap on to a certain force uh, at a certain speed, uh, you can do that time after time after time. Again, it's highly repeatable. You can have the flexibility of adjusting the speed, adjusting the force, uh, but you can get uh, pretty or high rates of throughput when using servo devices. So that's the uh, capping in a uh, overview, uh, the application in an overview. Uh, the next set of slides are going to talk about servo capping and perhaps how Unitronics can be used uh, to provide benefits to you and your customers. I alluded to some of the elements of a capping application. Uh, you can see critical elements uh, depending upon your needs could be flexibility or having adjustable torque, adjustable speeds. Data logging and an audit trail could be very important if you're working with pharmaceuticals or uh, some type of a uh, controlled um, uh, material. 
where you need to provide uh, proof that the cap was put on to a certain specification. Uh, another critical element is to have fully integrated hardware and software, whether it's with your I.O., your PLC controller, your HMI, and your data acquisition. Uh, it's very important uh, to produce your machine to satisfy your customers' needs with fully integrated hardware and software. And I'm sure for many of you, it is no surprise that Unitronics can respond to these critical elements. We can provide flexibility. With our servos and our software, you can adjust the torque, the speed, the amount of rotation. You can provide data logging and have an audit trail of what was applied to your capping container. And of course, uh, fully integrated hardware and software uh, takes away any uh, chances of uh, incompatibility between the I.O., the PLC controller, the HMI, and your data acquisition. So Unitronics, through its controllers and software, through our motion control hardware, we can uh, give you uh, a very good answer and product offering for these critical elements. Components required in a servo capping application. Well, you would need some type of PLC or controller. You need the hardware uh, that would be considered the brains of the machine. And of course, the software to uh, operate the application uh, and to provide all the benefits. You need some type of rotating device. That could be a ball screw and nut. Uh, if you're screwing on a cap, uh, there's there's some hardware involved in holding the cap and rotating the cap onto the bottles. And this is something that Unitronics does not supply. The rotating device, uh, whether it's a ball screw and nut or whatever you're using, uh, that is something that would be supplied by a third party vendor. And last but not least, the third major component required in a servo capping application is the servo motor and cable and drives. And of course, Unitronics is one of the leading providers of servo motors and drives and cables um, across the globe. When it comes to uh, hardware, the PLC and controllers, Unitronics controllers, we offer a wide variety of hardware. Uh, what you see on the screen are the different Unistream families of controllers. These controllers are easy to program and readily available. Uh, we have them with and without uh, the UniCloud availability. Uh, we have the Unistream PLC, the Unistream built-in, which has a uh, combined PLC, HMI, and I.O., and then the modular which can be um, fit into specific uh, applications with specific I.O. requirements. But any of these Unistream controllers, again, can be used with our servo motion products using the Unilogic software. Uh, it's a great um, brain, it's a, bra it's a great central controller for your application. And of course, the Unistream controllers operate via the Unilogic software. Uh, the uh, Unilogic software is uh, phenomenal. If you don't have any experience with it, uh, please take, take some time uh, in the next week or two. Uh, you can download our software at no charge. 
and you can start writing your ladder logic, writing your code, developing your HMIs, um, configuring uh, servo logic and servo motor operations uh, quite quickly uh, because of the predefined function blocks and because it is integrated into one software package um, we have uh, testimony that it slashes development time uh, up to 50 percent in an automation application so if you are interested in learning more about Unilogic, uh, a great next step would be to download it from the Unitronics website. Uh, here you see on the web, uh, on your screen a, a uh, copy of the website. And if you go and scroll over software, you'll have a drop down menu for Unilogic, VisiLogic, and the U90 ladder. Uh, if you click on the Unilogic, it takes you to a page where you can download the software. Uh, you can register, again, at no charge. You can use the software and develop applications at no charge. And um, you have a phenomenal tool to work uh, with your automation uh, requirements and your customer specifications. So advantages of the Unilogic software, uh, the con as the control software, the Unistream controllers are built uh, hand in hand with the Unilogic software. The Unitronic servo motors and drives are built to be integrated into Unilogic using our controllers. The software and the support we provide at no charge. It's very easy to use the Unilogic software with simple drag and drop function blocks. It is, uh, simply put, feature rich. It provides easy development and seamless integration between all the hardware servo motor, servo drives, I.O. blocks, I.O. link, and the controllers, and the HMI. So that integration comes from one software choice, and that is Unilogic. I'm going to pause here and see if there's any questions from the audience. Again, I thank you for taking time today. Join us. Uh, if you do have any questions, just type them into the question window. I don't see any questions coming through, so I'm going to continue on. And if you do think of something, uh, please just type them into the window, and we'll be happy to provide answers to you. As I mentioned earlier with uh, capping and servo capping, one of the major components required uh, typically would be some type of rotating device. Uh, I think of it as a ball screw and nut, uh, and that would be used to twist or push the cap onto the container. And as I mentioned, Unitronics does not provide uh, this hardware uh, readily available from different vendors. Uh, many of them have um, form and fit uh, with our servo motors, so you can easily integrate our motors onto these types of actuators uh, to develop your machine. Another set of hardware that is required for capping would be your servo motors and your servo drives, and then the cables that would run uh, between the motor and drives. So we're gonna take a few minutes to discuss the Unitronics servo product offering.
coming uh, shortly uh, to a Unitronics uh, distributor will be our new servo product, which has been expanded to go up to 10 horsepower uh, for the motors and drives uh, and 480 volt, uh, true 480 volt um, power in uh, to the drives. So uh, we do offer uh, servo power range from 50 watts of power up to 7.5 kilowatts. Our drives can operate on 220, uh, 240 single phase, uh, 220, 240 three phase, and of course the new true 480 three phase uh, servo drives. Uh, the motors, the new motors that we're introducing, the B5 and B6 motors, uh, are broken into two groups, the low inertia and medium inertia motors. All of our motors have a 23-bit, all of the new motors have a 23-bit high-resolution absolute encoder built in. And of course, our communications between the controller and the drives remain either EtherCAT or can open. With the EtherCAT communication, you can get four axes of coordinated motion and four axes of discrete motion. With CAN open, you can get eight axes of discrete motion. No true coordinated motion with CAN open. Another new feature that we will be introducing over the next 30 days is a common DC bus, um, which is to save energy. Many of the motors have built-in braking resistors, and there's also uh, protection against overheating and short circuit uh, protection. The EtherCAT servo drives will have a built-in STO circuit, and the new servo drives, whether it's EtherCAT or CAN open, will allow for zero stacking installation or side-by-side -side installation as you see in the picture. We've also increased the momentary maximum torque capabilities of our motors and many of the motors now will go to 350% of the continuous torque rating and that's up from 300% maximum momentary torque from our previous motor line. And with the built-in shaft seal, all of our motors are rated IP65 and 67. Here's a uh, summary of the torque ratings, the continuous torque ratings of our new motor size. Uh, you can see it in the graph on the right hand of the screen. Uh, motors start uh, the part numbers with a quadruple zero and go up to a double zero seventy five. And for torque, that means our lowest torque, uh, our smallest motor maxes out of a continuous torque of 0.159 newton meters. Our largest motor maxes out at a continuous torque rating of 48 newton meters, some pretty hefty motors. And again, um, momentary torque or peak torque uh, can be up to three and a half times these amounts. Details uh, will be available in the next two weeks on the website or feel free to reach out to me if you need specific specifications on any of the products that we talk about today. I'd be happy to engage uh, with you, uh, provide specifications and talk about your application. So whether you're 
uh, pushing on or screwing on a very small threaded cap to a, a huge um, type of device on, let's say, a paint bucket or, gosh, I, I you, you could probably think of some large applications where you need 48 uh, Newton meters of continuous torque. We now have the product capable of providing that for you. Here's a quick snapshot uh, summary of our uh, new servo drives. Again, CAN Open or EtherCAT. The EtherCAT will have a built-in STO circuit. And you can see the different voltages for drives offered in 240 single phase. We have three drives that are available in 240 volt single or three phase. And then uh, we have one drive that will operate a 243 phase. And then the 480s, uh, 480 volt three phase, uh, again, uh, from one kilowatt up to seven and a half kilowatt. So if you need the high output motors, you will be required to supply 480 volt three phase electric. So just to take a moment to review servo capping and the advantages that Unitronics can provide you, the Unilogic software is easy to use. We offer a wide range of controllers, whether it's the Vision System or the Unistream family of controllers. We will be introducing in the next few weeks an expanded line of servo motors and drives. And all of this hardware and software is fully integrated and provided by Unitronics. And that is along with our outstanding support. And time and time again, our customers have told us uh, the advantage, the a key advantage of using Unitronics is that our product is cost effective and readily available to them. I hinted a little bit about the integration of the software. I have some screenshots that I'd like to show you. Uh, this is a developed uh, an HMI screenshot uh, developed for servo capping. Uh, you have your typical enable drive, stop drive, home the drive. Uh, you can develop software very easily to have multiple recipes. Uh, here we have uh, soda, uh, carbonated beverage uh, with four different names. And those names uh, in the recipe are coded to different torque ratings and different numbers of revolutions needed to put the cap on. So uh, here for Coca-Cola, um, let's say we have uh, four to seven rotations are required to get a passing uh, capping. Uh, and then uh, we need to operate here at 17 and a half um, percent of the rated output of the motor, the rated continuous output of the motor. So uh, that you can change that to newton meters or ounce inches or foot pounds, whatever is needed uh, in this application. Uh, we did it as a percentage of the rated output of the motor. And then here on the bottom left of the HMI screen, you will receive the actual number of revolutions and the actual torque uh, applied. And whether it is a pass or fail, uh, if it's out of these specifications, it, in this HMI example, it will show you a red light. Uh, showing that it failed. 
I believe on the next screen uh, is the data log. So uh, if you uh, are on the HMI in this example and you click on the data log button, uh, this screen will sh uh, then pop up on your HMI and you can see uh, whether it's pass or fail, it gives you a date stamp and a time stamp, uh, the recipe name, uh, whether it passed or failed, uh, the actual rated torque required, uh, that's the specification in the recipe, and then the actual torque that was required, and then the number of rotations. So perhaps you're putting a cap on and it misthreads or or misapplies somehow, and the motor, uh, excuse me, the recipe states that you need between four and seven rotations for passing, and 17 and a half percent of rated torque. Uh, here you see for Coca-Cola, uh, you are within the torque and the number of rotations, and therefore that's considered a passing uh, uh, capping application or, or situation. Uh, you could look at the next line, again, your date and time stamp, the recipe name, whether it was pass or fail, your rated torque, your actual torque, but here it only, um, it only rotated once. Uh, perhaps the cap got jammed on the bottle, the motor was only able to rotate once, and that's considered a fail. There's many different ways of, of determining whether the capping was acceptable or not. Uh, we're using torque and rotations in this uh, example, and you can see here uh, it failed. Uh, in, on the next line, again, the recipe name, it passed, uh, the specified torque, the actual torque, and the number of rotations, five. Uh, so that was a pass. Here we have, again, a fail. Um, on this uh, cap, the uh, specified torque, the actual torque, and the number of rotations was three. Uh, we needed a minimum of four in our recipe, so that would be considered a fail. And you can integrate your software logic with our controllers and our IO link devices to uh, have uh, camera uh, capabilities where you can take uh, pictures of a good cap, a bad cap, and compare it. Uh, you don't have to just determine uh, torque and rotations, whether it's pass and fail. Uh, again, you can use photo imaging, uh, sensors, uh, whatever IO you need, uh, whatever devices you need to then determine whether a capping situation has failed or if it has passed. The next topic that we're going to move to, this kind of wraps up uh, servo capping. Again, the, the servo motors, the controllers are very feature rich. The logic can be uh, complicated um, or as easy as you require. And of course, accessories can be added uh, to give you uh, feedback uh, in, into a, a very well-priced, readily available hardware. Moving on, we're going to go into precision dispensing. Uh, this is part two of our webinar. And when I think of precision dispensing, uh, it's just like the picture you see on the right where you might be dispensing uh, some type of pharmaceutical. Whether it's a uh, antibiotic or some type of a um, uh, what what have you, uh, any type of pharmaceutical medical uh, device where you need to dispense uh, very precisely, 
the drug, or perhaps you're doing something that isn't as precise where you are dispensing um, glue or some type of sealant on a product. And servo motors are a, a great choice for your dispensing applications. Um, when you talk about dispensing, there are many uh, variables that affect your success. Uh, there are various viscosities of product that you are dispensing uh, that could be done at various temperatures. And of course, the quantity of, of material that is dispensed um, is, uh, can be very critical and very precise. By using a servo motor in dispensing, you get a very accurate and repeatable quantity and force and speed. So keep in mind, uh, one of the benefits of using servos for precision dispensing is an accurate and repeatable quantity of product dispensed. Dispensing devices can be put into uh, three classifications. Uh, there are pneumatic dispensers that run using air cylinders. Uh, as you see on the right hand of your screen, there are electric motors. Um, probably not as precise. I wouldn't consider that to be a very precise uh, device, but this electric motor can run a pump uh, for uh, water application, wastewater application, chemical, uh, what have you. And of course, the servo uh, applications where you do need something that is very precise for dispensing, um, servos are a great choice. Pneumatic devices are typically restricted by speed. The actuator can only move at a uh, fixed speed and a fixed torque. Uh, cost is relatively inexpensive, but you get minimal flexibility if you use a pneumatic device. Electric motors, well there you have uh, variable speeds. You can use a, uh, a VFD. Uh, you can use a, uh, other types of uh, speed devices for your electric motor. Uh, your torque and force are typically fixed. Uh, we, we do offer VFDs uh, for AC induction rated motors where you can vary the force and torque applied uh, or, or uh, output from the motor. So uh, the cost, again, relatively inexpensive, but you're not going to get the precision. If you, if you need to deliver a microgram of product, a uh, very precise uh, amount, uh, you're not going to get that precision typically with an electric motor. Uh, you're going to get thousands of gallons uh, a minute, an hour, or what have you, uh, with some of the electric motor pumps that I have seen. So just keep that in mind. If you use a servo motor and drive, a servo system for your dispensing, you are going to get flexible speed. You will get flexible torque. The cost is relatively inexpensive. You will be able to put together a high precision, high repeatability system by using servo devices. Very critical here, high precision and repeatability. So you can deliver a precise amount and do that time after time after time uh, with a properly designed, properly sized servo device. Advantages of using servos can simply be put as ultimate control of speed of your motor, the torque of your motor, and the position of your motor. The speed, the torque, and the position can be repeatable and reliable. You can write recipes in the software to change 
your speed, your torque, and your positioning. So it makes it a very flexible answer to precision dispensing applications. On the next couple of slides, uh, as we wrap up here, I would like to show you uh, some screenshots of an HMI uh, for servo dispensing. Um, here is a, uh, it's a three axis system. We have a virtual axis, then controlling uh, physical axis one and physical axis two. Um, and what I want to point out to you is the precision of the positioning. So in this camming recipe, we are doing a minus 45 degree move to a plus 45 degree move. And uh, here you see uh, position is hitting 45 degrees um, with uh, great repeatability and precision. How do we do that? Uh, the, the secret to providing uh, precise positioning can be found in the servo feedback uh, device, the encoder. Uh, the encoders that we use on our new line of servo motors is an absolute encoder. It's a 23-bit absolute encoder available in the new product along with the existing motors. And uh, the 23 bits uh, equates to 8,388,000 pulses per revolution. So for every 360 degrees of revolution, that motor is going to see over a little over 8 million different positions. So the precision of the servo is much greater than a pneumatic cylinder or some type of inverter rated motor, which makes it very suitable for dispensing applications where precision is required. And just to summarize um, some of the key points of today's webinar, uh, the servo products offered by Unitronics, again, from 50 watts to seven and a half kilowatts, that's a little less than one horsepower, all the way up to 10 horsepower, uh, available through our servo motors. We can work with a single phase 220, 240 volt, or now a true 480 volt uh, servo drive. The 23-bit high resolution absolute encoders uh, are available on every motor, as are uh, for the drives, EtherCAT communications between the drive and the controller, or you can go with can open communications. Again, please remember that the EtherCAT communication option gives you coordinated axes. You get four coordinated axes with a total of eight axes for each controller. Built-in braking resistors, the new EtherCAT drives will have built-in STO circuitry and 350% of peak uh, momentary peak torque will be available with the new uh, B5 and B6 motors and drives. And if you like pictures like I do, here's just a, a quick reminder of the various motors we offer and the rated torque. Again, up to 350% for maximum torque intermittently. And our servo drives, again, available with EtherCAD or CAN open. Uh, you have your voltage and power output here. So if you have an application where you're thinking about servo motors for dispensing or for capping, 
uh, please keep Unitronics in mind. Uh, we have the product, we have the know-how uh, to make sure that your application is successful. That wraps up today's webinar. I thank you, we thank you for attending. Uh, please reach out to me or Thomas if you have specific questions, if you need additional information, or would you, if you would like to discuss an application. Uh, we'll stay on the line here for a couple minutes to see if any questions pop up uh, in the question box. Please type your questions in. And again, thank you for attending. I appreciate the time. I'll wish you uh, a great remainder of your day. And uh, I'm always here. We are always here if you have any questions or comments. All right, I see no further questions coming in. Uh, a couple of you have asked for speed torque curves. Um, we will send that to you uh, in the literature. And there was a question regarding uh, the duration of maximum torque. And I will get that number uh, for you and, and post it out uh, to you via email. And thank you. Thank you once again. This concludes today's webinar. Uh, please enjoy the rest of your day.